Hi, I'm Chris Hartgrink from Liberate Science, and we are a cooperative research, resetting research work. And in this session today, uh, I'll talk about the peer-to-peer -peer commons, which is a distributed information layer to reset research publishing. And thanks for taking the time today to go, go through this with me, because I know there's a lot going on in the world, so I'm happy to have you join, join me on this. And the peer-to-peer -peer commons is trying to do one thing, which is to solve the question, how can we make research better and easier using hyperdrives? And this all sounds very fancy, uh, but that's the, the core question. And what we wanna do is set up this ground rules for application development. But to understand how we can make things better in the research space, we need to also understand where the current research publishing system fails. So some of the issues uh, include uh, selective publication, where an estimated 50% of all scientific studies that are conducted are actually not published because of the results. Publication delays, which are not unusual for to be around one to three years for uh, a typical research study. And I've experienced this firsthand. It really takes a long time. Uh, and then subsequently when it is published, it's often paywalled or uh, it's published only in pay to play situations. So, and, and that of course creates this inequity in who actually gets to access the knowledge or who gets to publish their knowledge. The research process in, a, in and of itself in the public publications are often, is often mi misrepresented consciously or unconsciously due to uh, reviewers wanting positive results or unconsciously due to simple human biases that creep up during the research process. Uh, predictions that are misremembered uh, and never discovered that those misremembrances occur. But also the publishing system has the issue of not including things that aren't text. So data, code, other non-text elements of research are now easily excluded because the paper format is still based on the text. The publishing system also has the issue of not incentivizing replication, which is this core principle of the scientific method um, that we do the work again and again. And if we keep having the same finding, we keep getting the same finding, then it, it stands more firmly. And finally, one of the issues is that there is only peer review after the fact. So there is only one feedback moment after the fact. And from uh, a lot of other uh, areas of work, waiting until the very end for uh, feedback is a very bad idea because a lot can go wrong in the meantime, which also means that you can't steer correct anymore. And if we take these issues and we flip them around, they actually provide us with the set of wants for the peer-to-peer -peer commons, which would mean that from a peer-to-peer -peer commons, we would want non-selective publication or complete publication regardless of results, faster publishing or un no unnecessary delays, free to access and free to play, more accurate reporting, include non-text elements like code and data, incentivize replication and provide more feedback moments as you go along the research process. And having formulated the, these ones, we can start thinking about how can we use hyperdrives to fulfill those ones. So if we have a hyperdrive and we would put the research article as we know it in that now, we could cross off our list, the free to access, free to play, because hyperdrives on, run, run on the peer-to-peer -peer protocol, which means they're free to access once they're on there, you can put them in uh, for free as well. But we have a lot of other ones that are remaining. And as a result of that, we need to think beyond the article, beyond just the research article. So we think about, okay, what goes into an article? It's these various kinds of outputs uh, of research. It can be the code, the data, some writing, some videos for materials. And if we put those into hyperdrives, we actually start seeing that if we would remove the article altogether, 
we would retain the free to access and free to play, but we wouldn't need the article anymore. So this is, I think it complexifies uh, the step first, but then from that, we can actually go further and make the process simpler. Because once we start thinking about these specific outputs, we actually also see that these outputs are individual research steps. And these research steps, uh, when we put them in hyperdrives, we can add some structure to them to actually create a lot of these, to cross off a lot of these other ones. So if we would start out with our theory, we would write that up, put that into a hyperdrive, and then we would link uh, the next step back to that theory, but put the step itself in a, in a separate hyperdrive and keep doing that also for uh, subsequent writing, some code that, to analyze the data that follow from it, and then so subsequently the writing that sort of summarizes the results. If we would structure our research this way using hyperdrives, we can actually select off a lot of these ones. So we would have complete publication or non-selective publication because we communicate our research as we go along, each step gets communicated. So we don't yet have the results to select on. The delays would be reduced because we actually communicate smaller units closer to the uh, time it happens. We also get more accurate reporting because the reporting happens closer to the actual events. And we include non-text elements and we get more moments for feedback. Plus, if we have this modular stepwise as you go reporting, we also get more feedback moments and we can get more incentivized replication because we can add new research steps that directly link back to the previous one. So we don't need to retrace all the steps, rehash all the steps every single time. So that gives us a framework to pretty much address or make progress on a lot of these ones. But the question then becomes then what? Because this is a framework, this, is, this isn't yet an implementation for the peer-to-peer -peer commons. So this is where the peer-to-peer -peer commons specifications come in where we have two kinds of specifications. Uh, one is what goes into a module. That is one step that is contained in a hyperdrive. And we add this very basic principle. We take the regular index.json metadata and we extend it with some additional uh, requirements. So we require that everything is licensed CC0 because then we also are ensure that people can reuse our content in their research. They can actually build on it instead of being hampered with that because that happens a lot in reusing survey questions or guidelines that there's legal uncertainty. Then we add what type of uh, module is it? Is it content or a profile? Because we need both. Uh, content needs to be uh, linked to a profile. Then we add subtype, which indicates, is it a theory? Is it a data set? Is it some code? Is it something else? Uh, and we can use all kinds of um, types for that. We choose to recommend Wikidata objects, uh, but you can think of many others. Then we add a main, um, main object, which means what is the main file? What is the index.html of that module? So that if it's a dataset.csv, we know, okay, open this file, and then all the other files will be the supporting materials. Then we also have other modules the, in, of type profile uh, designated as the authors, the parent module. So these are the preceding steps, the directly preceding steps, the follows modules, which um, is specific to profiles, Authors and parents are specific to content, follows and contents are specific to profile. So you also get a social aspect to this as you go research communication, where you have profiles that author content and follow other profiles. And then the ultimately, we only require open file formats to be put into the hyperdrive so we can ensure that we can still open them across devices without any proprietary software. Plus, we also want to prevent some uh, formats from being put 
into hyperdrives because .exes and we don't want malware to be spread. Plus we have an interoperability specification, which sets out some ground rules for how to store and index all the hyperdrives that live up to the P2P Commons specification, so the modules. And that way it would allow switching between application build, uh, applications built using the peer-to-peer -peer Commons specifications and um, make it easy to interoperate between them. So you can actually create the space to compete for new innovative ways to consume, discover, produce information that goes into the peer-to-peer -peer Commons. And all of these specifications, they're now at the stage that it's ready to build. So peer-to-peercommons.com has the latest specifications if you're interested in it. Um, they will become stable in the next month or so. Uh, so this is uh, at, by the end of August 20, 2020, they will probably be stable. That's uh, the roadmap. Um, plus we partner with Gate to provide a software development kit to make it easier to, uh, to provide software with up to specifications, up to standards, operations for the peer-to-peer -peer commons. And version one is forthcoming uh, after the specifications themselves stabilize. We at Liberate Science are actually using the peer-to-peer -peer commons and the software development kit to build Hypergraph, one application that researchers can use to publish their research as you go in smaller units. Um, but anybody else can pick up the tooling as well um, to build another application and they would be able to interoperate. So if you're interested in the Peter Per Commons at all, feel free to reach out um, or follow one of the links in the, in the slide. Uh, of course, this is a team effort. It's not just me doing this. And uh, I would like to recognize everyone here, uh, Julian, Lisa, James, Neha, Diego, and Patch. Um, we've been working on this for almost a year now. Um, very practically trying to implement everything. Um, the idea was born a few years ago and they've been doing tremendous work and it's been a pleasure uh, to work with them and also to share that work with you today. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions and thank you for taking the time to listen to me. <laughs>